G'day guys, welcome back. Little experiment today. Does heat cause caterpillars? And by caterpillars, I mean that long row of cells all joined together that look like a little caterpillar. So I'm gonna do same colors, <clears throat> same amount of oil. Uh, this is the spot on treadmill belt lubricant, 100% silicone. That's what I always use. It's nice and thin, uh, mixes in lovely. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get going. This is a 20 by 25 canvas centimeters, 8 by 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to layer these both exactly the same. Um, I'm using my 60% glue, this is Elmer's glue all, but you can use school glue. I've been doing pores with the school glue, works beautifully. 60% glue, 40% water, or basically any white craft glue you can get. Don't use wood glue. And I'm using the Montmartre uh, Studio acrylic paints with them. So I've mixed one part of the pouring medium to one part of the Montmartre. I find they don't need any extra water. I just do that mix and it is fine. So, um, what have I got? 60 grams of pouring medium and 60 grams of paint in each cup. That's two ounces of pouring medium and two ounces of paint, which is four ounces. Um, so normally I would do one drop per ounce or one drop per 30 uh, grams. So that's four. One, two, three, four. I won't do any in the white. So I've got a kind of, I've got a muted blue and a muted green. This is a navy, it's called, um, I've sort of, oh, I can't really give it a name because it's a different brand, but I made it myself. It's kind of like a purpley greyish blue, not a bright blue. So that's the navy. And then I've got this teal, which is my dark, muted green so as you know if you've been watching me you'll know that i do a light and a dark in one color and a light and a dark in another color that's what i do and i separate them i go dark light dark light dark light back to dark so that's how i layer my cups because i want the cells to be um you know you won't about see them you can't put these two together you won't see the cells will you Will you see like a, a grey ring around a navy cell? No, you won't. So, but you will with these. So dark light, dark light. So I've got the same paints as you can see. And I'm going to just layer the cups exactly the same way as I always do. Two layers. I've already stirred that one. So I'll do another stir. And this one hasn't got any oil in it. Alrighty, <clears throat> let's get going. I just want to make sure I stir it really, really well. I don't want any big blobs. Okay, we'll get going. I'm going to start with the navy. And I just have to make sure that I only use half of the navy now because I need to do another layer. And then the lime green. And then I've got um, charcoal as well, which I, I just wanted to throw in. I wanted to a little bit of, I didn't want to have black because it's quite stark. So I've just gone for a, a charcoal. So it's basically just black with some white added until I got the nice color that I wanted. Hopefully that will look pretty. And then we've got this light blue. Now these colours I've pretty much made myself because I can't get different colours from the Montmartre range. So the light blue I've made, the charcoal I've made, the navy I've made, this teal I've made. The only one that I haven't made is the green and the white. I don't mind mixing my, my own colours. <clears throat> I get the shades that I want. So that's fine. So happy Thanksgiving to everyone over in the States. We don't celebrate it here in Australia. 
Um, unless, of course, the Americans that are living here in Australia, they would probably still celebrate it. But happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I think it's today. Although you probably won't see this video until afterwards, but that's okay. I'm only really a day behind with my videos. I, I haven't got a whole stash stored up. Normally I've got like five or six videos waiting, you know, to upload, but I don't at the moment. I've just been so busy. I haven't haven't had a chance. Um, but I've got some time off next week because I'm waiting for one of my dogs to birth. So I've taken some time off work. And uh, while I wait for her to birth, I will endeavour to make some more videos. So we've got lots to upload over the holidays, over the silly season, Christmas. <laughs> we call it the silly season here in Oz. I'm just going to make sure that my video is still going. I've been having trouble with it turning off. Yay, it's still going. Now you guys let me know if it turns off, won't you? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, no, that's not going to happen, is it? Be nice if you could. Send me a message. Although my phone's on, um, my phone's on silent. <clears throat> not that you could send me a message about the video because it's already up when you see it. <laughs> oh dear. Yes, so I took uh, Zoe for her pregnancy x-ray yesterday. She's my little black teacup poodle and she's got two puppies on board. Haven't really had much success with Zoe and her puppies. So I'm really, really happy, hoping that we'll have a successful pregnancy and successful birth and live puppies this time. I think this will probably be her last time. That way, try for puppies. It's just heartbreaking, and I keep having <clears throat> bad results, sad results at the end of the pregnancy. But everything looks good so far. She doesn't eat. She's not a good eater. I'm gonna have to go out and she wouldn't eat this morning again. I'm gonna have to go out and get some um, roast chicken for her. I even offered her some smacko and a piece of cheese this morning and not turned her nose up at it, so I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully she's not going to birth early again because she's still got a week to go. Now, back to the painting. What I'm going to do, as I said when I started, I'm going to see if heat causes caterpillars. So I'm going to flip these two over. I'm going to tilt halfway like I always do and then one of them I'm going to torch from up high which I prefer and then the other one I'm going to torch down low. How low can you go and uh, see if it actually makes any difference at all. I'm going to do one at a time because I don't want the paint sitting in a big puddle. So I'll just do this one first and then I'll do that one. Oh, look at that. Love the little baby cell. So I'm going to use my big boy blow torch, which I always do. Can't even see that anymore. It's all covered in paint. So this one I'll torch from up high. So I've got probably just over 300 grams of mixed paint, which is 10 ounces for this size canvas. Got the corner catcher ready. All right. I feel as if I haven't done a flip and drag for ages. I've been doing swipes and I've been doing um, jiggle paws and yeah, I feel as if I haven't done one for ages. It's funny, you know, I'm, I don't do it for like a week and I think, oh my God, I don't, can't do this. Okay. Just turn that around and do the other one the other way. I sometimes get different colours when I do that. I, I have no idea why, but... Ooh, there's some lime green. Look at that. When you're pouring paint over your corners, let it run off and then just slowly pour it on. Don't like pour it in a 
a circle or anything like that. I'm going to tip this over the corners anyway because I don't like the stripies on the corners but this is just a little bit of paint to help the other paint flow over the edge okay it's got some lime there in the middle that's pretty I'm glad I swapped that around okay now what I'm going to do first is just cover half the surface And I'm just going to pull that paint through. I'm not going to worry about tipping the paint off the corners at the moment. You know those stripies there? They go off at the moment, it doesn't matter. Hopefully the grey won't give me too much of a muddy look. But I just didn't want black. All right. So now is the crucial time. Now is the torching time. So uh, this one is going to be torching from up high. So let's try. And I'm going to concentrate, so I'm going to try not to talk because I can't do two things at once, apparently. Nice and, well, I will a little bit. Uh, nice and high. So at the moment, nothing's happening. I can't see anything happening on the surface, so I'm a little bit too high. So as soon as you can see little spits happening, you know you're right. And you can move on to get a little bit close in one area. It's really hard to try not to get too close, it really is. Because I'm kind of watching the, the surface of the canvas instead of, yeah, <laughs> whoops, whoa, whoa, but I'm getting too close. And then if nothing happens, you kind of go a little bit closer and it's too late and you've gone too close. Okay, I think that will... Oh, no, I need a little bit up here, don't I? A little bit there. Okay. Actually, that grey is looking a little bit purple, isn't it? Hmm, I wonder why. All right, so now this one's got enough cells. Um, I might just leave those to sort of develop a little bit and I'll flip this one over and it can sit there while I tilt this one. Okay. And you know the drill with your tilting, go back and forth, back and forth. Let me make sure I'm still videoing. So paranoid with it now. Yeah, because it's turned off like on three separate occasions. So that's where you can go over the corners. Don't take your drippy hands over the top. Make sure you always bring them down here. See the drips? You don't want that falling into your painting. Now I'm just sort of playing around with it until I can... Just checking my composition. Actually, I don't know that I like this one as much, that side. Now that I've... Um... I've turned the cup around because I thought I'd get a better colour. I don't know that I like that one as much. Okay. You wipe my hands. It's still pretty though, hey. I mean, it, if I didn't, if I didn't turn it around, I wouldn't have that green going through the centre there. And the grey kind of looks a bit brown, doesn't it? Unusual. Okay. Um, right, that is really gorgeous. I love that. Um... No real caterpillars to be seen. Mm, maybe one little tiny one there where I got a little bit close, but overall, really, really pretty. Okay, let's do this one. 
and I'm going to do the same thing because it's an experiment. Do the same thing. And try not to drip into the painting next door. Oh, there's another fly in here. Me and my flies, I tell you. Now, don't put paint into the middle. If you're going to put extra paint, make sure it's on the edges because you can tip that over. If you put it in here, it's going to look really messy, so don't do that. You can always tilt to cover that middle section, um, but it's, it's much harder to get rid of a, a section right there. So if you're going to add paint, do it to the edges only. And because this is the biggest area that needs covering, I'm going to turn it and do that side first. It's a real shame for me to actually purposely ruin a painting by torching too close. I feel bad about doing that. All right, let's go. <clears throat> I'm going to get to this corner. And as I go to that corner, this white bit here will be covered a little bit as well, see that? We'll go back. And I'll just pull that paint through there to wet that a little bit. And then as I go that way, that should cover as well. Like so. And there you go, that's how you do it. It's easy peasy, isn't it? Now I don't need the corner catcher again. I'm going to turn that around and now I'm going to ruin it by getting caterpillars, <clears throat> I think. It is an experiment. I'm assuming that I'm going to get caterpillars because I'm going to torch too close. So, just keep walking around and having to check that. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Let's ruin it. too close. See the difference? It's very, very busy because, you know, I torched very close. So a lot of cells all came up at once. I'm going to just zoom you in so that you can see a little bit more of a close up. Tell me if the video goes off, will you? So you can you can see that the this one I've torched a lot closer. Um, I will zoom you down later, but you can see it's just Caterpillar City. They're everywhere. All right, let's tilt this. I mean, it's still going to be a pretty painting. Don't get me wrong. It's just um, if you don't want caterpillars. And you want bigger cells. Um, don't get too close with your torch. Because it just brings up a huge colony of them. And I personally prefer a little bit of background. You know, I don't want a mass of, of cells. I automatically go for straightening up my lines. Alright, so that's about as much as I tilted with the other one. So we'll do the same thing. I might just get that little bit of off the corner there. Open them up a little bit more. OK, 
Okay. Well, there you go. Same colours, same everything. Light torching from up high, torching from down low. Um, I'm going to take these gloves off so I can get you down for a close up. Okay, so this is the one that was the light torching. So we've got beautiful cells, they're nice and round. They've got space around them so they're not bumping into each other. You can see the background. Love those white rings around the blue. And that pretty, pretty, pretty background. Just turn my light off. I think the colours are just a little bit more clear, they're not so glary. So there we go, that's that one. Really pretty. And in this one where I got too close, as you saw, just hundreds and hundreds of cells appeared all at once. And um, yeah, they all kind of join together. There's really no background to speak of. See all they, they all join up together like that. Make those little caterpillar type things. I just don't think they're very attractive at all. And I like to see the background. Um, yeah, I, I prefer not to have them so close to each other. You can see there's long lines of them. Sometimes they're touching each other, like this, this big one here on the end. <clears throat> they're not very attractive, are they? Even those green ones there in a line, they're not touching each other really, but there's still a big long row of them. So that's the difference. Hope you can see what I'm talking about. So just be really gentle with your torching. Start from way up high. And as soon as you get those little bubbles popping on the surface, little specks happening, then move away. You can always come back if you need to. So this is the good one. <laughs> Well, I think it's the good one. No caterpillars. Lots of space between. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. So just be really careful with your torching, hey? Um, I find that the bigger torches are better than the little guys. Um, I'll walk around here and show you. See, I've got this range of little guys in the back there. Um, yeah, I for me, I just think that they they get too close because the flame's so little. You get too close um, because you're waiting for something to happen. I have tried those little ones. I, I just don't like them. The big boys for me work better because um, I get a, a high heat, but I don't have to get very close at all for the cells to come up. So that's my little experiment. Um, you can take what you like from the results, whatever you think. But for me, definitely prefer the, the higher up torching for that result rather than that really busy look. All right, that'll be it. For me, I'm going to have to go out and get some roast chicken for Zoe. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you for the next poll. Bye for now.